the whole direction of my life has gone from being a refugee and having an autistic child, and those have been the two real drivers. And I come from a, a fairly bourgeois family in Western Germany, and my father was a, a judge when Hitler came to power because he was Jewish. He lost his job and we started moving around um, Europe trying to find a safe place. It was not a good time to be Jewish. My mother then did a very brave thing. Um, she organized for my sister and I to be put on a so-called kinder transport rescue train. I think it was the most traumatic thing that can happen to any child. Five years old, not understanding what was going on, uh, moving to a, a, a new country with different language, different parents, a different everything. I was so disoriented. When I got to England, um, a lot of well-meaning people um, said to uh, me, five-year-old, aren't you lucky to be alive? Aren't you lucky to be alive? And indeed I was. I was lucky to be alive and I got this feeling that I needed to justify my existence, to, to justify my survival. And so pretty early on, I got this rather priggish, um, I am going to lead a life that was worth saving. And that has driven my life. Uh, it continues to be active and live and as strong today as it was 85 years ago. I think I always wanted to be a mathematician and at the age of 18 I started off as a sort of mathematical clerk. I was sort of pounding a desk calculator doing calculations and married shortly afterwards and joined a very small computing company. I, I just fell in love with computing. It was absolutely absorbing. I could not believe that I should be paid so well for something that I, I, I enjoyed so much. It was a wonderful thing to happen to me. Having been patronized as a Jew, I then found it extremely difficult to be always patronized as a woman. You fight back a bit, you learn to ignore things, you make a joke of it, but eventually it, 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 it does get to you. Really almost overnight I decided I, I, I've, I've had enough of this sexism, I, I really can't stand it anymore. I am going to try and set up an organisation that is the sort of organisation that I would like to work with. Family friendly, flexible to the extreme, ambitious. I really knew nothing at all about business, but I did find that I had some sort of flair for it. And it grew from just me doing the work, and then five or six people, and it eventually grew to eight and a half thousand people. And for years we dissembled and disguised the fact that it was part-time women working from home. My idea of selling was to write lots of letters to companies that were advertising for programmers and got absolutely no reply whatsoever. It irritated me, it made me more aggressive, it made me more, uh, you know, I'll jolly well show them that I can do it. And also I felt all the time that I was doing this for, for women in general, not just for me. I needed to survive in that big male environment, but I also needed to make it an environment suitable for everybody. My dear husband suggested, actually, that maybe it is that um, double feminine of Stephanie Shirley um, that was putting people off and suggested that I started just signing those letters as Steve Shirley. And surprise, surprise, it had some impact. And I've been Steve ever since. A little boy arrived and suddenly we had to really refocus our lives, our plans. And Giles was um, placid, very easy baby. But then at two and a half years old, he, he turned to being a wild, unmanageable toddler. He was profoundly autistic. He never spoke again, he lost his speech. Um, and the family became autistic in a way because there were so many things that we couldn't do and didn't do. What we did do was eventually 
um, rear a, a child that spent 11 years in an asylum, but I did get him out um, and we set up our first charity and he finished up leading a quiet, dignified life in the community and I'm enormously proud of that. So my first charity now looks after 300 uh, people modelled on my Chelsea. Most important things that you do in life do not happen quickly. It took me 17 years to get that charity up and running and independent of me. I, I'm enormously proud of it. As a refugee, I was consumed by uh, survivor guilt and depression. And, and it's only by starting in the philanthropic world have I been able to let that rancor go. I was very keen to get the company into the hands of the staff. That was the biggest gift I have ever given, a quarter of the company at no cost to anyone but me. We eventually floated, um, and at our peak value, we were worth $2.8 billion. It made a tremendous difference to many people's lives. I'm very, very um, pleased that uh, 70 of the team uh, did become sterling millionaires. My advice to a young person today is really to focus on something that they are interested in, to make an impact on the world. It is so, so satisfying and worthwhile. You can't be what you don't see, whether you're disabled or autistic or epileptic or old or young. Uh, we, we need all these skills and we need role models to show that it can happen. Success now means to me that I've got choice as to what I do, who I spend time with, how I um, spend my li the rest of my life, and uh, I hope it is to continue to lead a life that's worth saving. <laughs>